Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mental Health Hour. Welcome to episode 70. This is, um, we will be discussing de- domestic violence tonight. Um, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Also, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for those of you that enjoy a Gemma heavy show, you're in for a treat tonight. Um, <laughs> Gemma is uh, more versed in this than I. Um, I do have some talking points. Um, however, uh, we will get down to the nitty gritty. Um, let's start with uh, introductions. Hello, I am Kim. Gemma, how are you? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Alive. So, uh, yeah. Plodding along. Right. So. Uh, you wanted to do this episode specifically uh, for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, mm-hmm. What have you on this topic? Um, well, I've lived through it long enough. So um, having been there and experienced many different types of domestic violence, Um, unfortunately, I certainly, um, know quite a bit about it. I, um, have been on the receiving end from more than one partner and a lot of people, not just, not just partners, actually, like family members and friends as well. Um, and a lot of people think domestic violence, sometimes known as domestic abuse. A lot of people think that it has to be physical and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be physical at all. Um, A lot of people now refer to it as domestic abuse because it covers a wider range, but it's all the same, Um, domestic violence, domestic abuse, and it doesn't actually have to be physical. Um, So yeah, I've, I've lived through it for many, many years. Um, so I, I am um, somewhat experienced in it, I'm afraid. Well, as we've discussed, um, we are going to uh, get into some slides, um, mm-hmm. as we normally do, um, and then we'll chit chat. Um, this is another very uh, Gemma heavy episode um, for those of you that love your Gemma heavy uh, stories. The old oh, there she goes again. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, yeah, for anyone that remembers all that, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, let's start with uh, some background knowledge. some uh, basics. Mm-hmm. You want to go through the slides, Gemma, please? Yeah. All right, which one do we want to put? Domestic abuse. That's not the one I wrote. It's that one. Okay, so domestic abuse statistics. So this one is aimed at the UK, but I'm pretty sure it's relevant worldwide. So in England and Wales, domestic abuse is at its highest ever. And I know that they said that it was even higher during the COVID lockdown and everything like that. Uh, A call is made every 30 seconds to police about abuse. In 2017, domestic abuse cost the economy 66 billion pounds. 66% of abusive partners also directly harm their own children. 70 to 90% of family court cases involve domestic abuse. 
It is estimated one third remains unreported. Domestic violence and abuse is rife throughout all cultures, race, sex, religions and age. Two women a week lose their lives at the hands of a partner or ex, which increased to five a week in lockdown in England and Wales. In 2017, 87% of those who were murdered at the hands of a current or ex-partner were killed within one month of leaving. One in three women and one in five children and one in six men will experience abuse in their lifetime. It takes an average of seven attempts to finally leave the abuser and an average of 32 incidents to seek help. And I can absolutely reiterate that last one. Indeed, no. Indeed, mum. Mm -hmm. Horrific. Horrific. Um, moving forward. Okay, so. Domestic violence statistics. 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner. One in three women and one in, five, uh, one in four men have been victims. 19% of domestic violence involves a weapon. 20,000 phone calls placed to domestic violence hotlines a day. That's a day, 20,000. Intimate partner violence accounts for 15% of all violent crime. And women between the ages of 18 to 24 are most commonly abused. And then we go. Right, okay. <clears throat> so know the signs. So domestic violence is more than physical violence. An abusive partner may be criticise the victim and their abilities, be overprotective or extremely jealous, threaten harm, isolate the victim from family or friends, use intimidation or manipulation tactics. And then there's the resources. So this is us aimed but we have got a number um it was on the intro um it's in the discord as well and an emergency call 911 999 in the uk call the spd domestic violence coordinator the numbers there uh, for anonymous confidential help available 24 7 call the national domestic violence hotline and if you Google that, it is, it does bring up other numbers. You can actually ring out. It's, um, it's there is an international number as well. But um, if you Google domestic violence, it, uh, I think it's get help for domestic violence. I'll put it in the get Discord. Not only will it allow you to hide your trail, it, there's websites that will allow you to hide your trail but it will bring up the numbers that you can ring as well and you can get help with that but it does actually allow you to hide your trail and become incognito during that time right and the uh in the last slide and this one here so what is domestic violence Domestic violence is any incident of threatening behaviour, violence or abuse between people who are in or have been in a relationship. This leaflet is for people who are worried that their friends may be in an unsafe relationship. So domestic violence can be physical, so hitting, punching, kicking and using weapons, etc. Sexual, forcing someone to have sex, touching someone when they do not want them to do so. Financial, taking money, controlling them and not letting someone work. So not letting them spend money, not letting them do anything that will cost money, not letting them have their own bank card. I went through all that. Emotional, 
uh, making someone feel bad or scared, blackmailing, checking up on someone and threatening them. Social, so isolation, controlling who someone can and can't see. And that can stem down to like controlling their social media, their phone, checking it. Um, not having to, even as far as having to ask permission to like go out and do things. Um, see people, speak to people, that sort of thing. Um, it's it's very, very controlling. Yes, indeed. Um, so speaking to the points of domestic violence, um, mm -hmm. uh, Gemma has uh, more poignant stories in, in dealings with Mm -hmm. uh, this type of um, topic I do not uh, however I do I can say that I was um, when I was drinking um, I was the aggressor um, I never put hands on another woman um mm -hmm. but uh definitely the emotional and um verbal emotional verbal um that we'll get into and we'll talk about uh or that we already have talked about uh that that is a real thing um verbally abusive people and emotionally abusive people can um, change the game uh, as far as uh, how we look at um, the, I don't want to call it domestic violence um, because that's getting into some um police maybe right Gemma yeah have you um had an experience with police yeah yeah definitely um there's a couple well there's there's been a few incidents one I can tell you but I have to be vague in doing so mm -hmm. um but it was it's when it mentioned about having uh, even after the relationship's finished, um, usually that's when the um, aggression increases. It certainly did in my case because they think there's nothing to lose. And on more than one occasion, I was told that if I can't have you, nobody else can. And it was... It was more full on after the relationship ended because not only, I mean, it took some doing to get out of the relationship to see that that wasn't a normal, healthy relationship and that I was being controlled and that I was being abused because I would think often, um, well, he hasn't really hit me that much, but even once is too much. But I would always make excuses and there was a time where I'd gone out and was with Thomas who was at the time very very young and due to being in and out of the pushchair um, at that time he was out of the pushchair and um, was snatched and can't say too much about it but it the police became involved and it's at that point where things changed for me because I thought that I thought I was building up a a case against this person so that I could finally become free after months and months of abuse even after the relationship had ended but uh, that wasn't the case and in all honesty, in that situation, the police made it worse for me. Um, it's not the case for everybody. 
and the biggest regret I have now is having backed out of going further with that, which has made it harder. But when um, when I was living with the partner that was violent, um, sometimes people would see bruises on me or because I was constantly cancelling and not meeting people. I was very rarely seen outside of the house. I was I was a mess. Um, lots of people started worrying about me, and one of my friends had done a welfare check on me and asked the police to come round and visit me. And unfortunately, at the time, the um, the police came when my partner at the time was here. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, she's fine. And didn't, um, they didn't really look into it or anything. But because the police had come round at that time, that triggered more violence to then carry on. And then one of the neighbours who heard the carrying on phoned the police and they came back and it was the same officers. And it's at that point where they knew something was going on and even though i wasn't saying sometimes actions speak louder than words and it was more what followed after that because the police then I, i'm assuming they were watching for when he was going out because they came back round after he's gone spoke to me actually took me to my gp which was just around the corner got me checked over and they did bloods and they did all sorts of things and that's when they found um that I'd been there were drugs in my system that I didn't know about and that's when everything started slowly piecing together that something wasn't right here but no matter how many people would tell me friends family no matter who would tell me that this isn't a normal thing you're not supposed to be getting treated like this I would be like, no, no, he's fine. You know, he loves me. He's fine. It's, it'll work out. It's, it's fine. And it was horrific. I had no access to a bank card, no access to money, no control over my own phone. I wasn't allowed to go out. I wasn't allowed to do anything that would cause any extra cost. So I would sit at home in the dark when he was at work, no lighting, no TV, no heating, no nothing. I wasn't allowed that because he would at the time we had one of the prepayment meters and you put like what looks to be like a USB card in the meter and if you take that out it um, at that time it stopped it working and then um, it would run into the emergency credit now you had to press a button to allow it to use the emergency credit but it would show you you'd used it so if he would come home and check that, that if that had been used. And if it had been used, then I, you're damn sure I'd get beaten for that. So it got where I'd just literally just sit at home on my own for six, seven hours a day. Yeah. Um, he'd even go as far as locking me in the house. I didn't have a key. And he'd lock me in the house. I couldn't leave. I couldn't do anything. And... Those times where he wasn't actually putting a hand on me, I didn't see that as not being normal. I didn't, I didn't see it um, as being so, so anything wrong with it. And no matter how many people would tell me this is not normal, this is not right, you know, you need to get out of it. I think most of me hoped that it would change. Most of me hoped that it would get better, but it didn't, and it just kept getting worse to the point where it was starting to get more violent, it was starting to get more aggressive. But it wasn't violence where, at first, like not where he'd come and hit me, like across the face or whatever. He would do things that would cause me to injure myself. Like for example, one of his best ones was when I was going in the oven and I'd be putting my arms in the oven like that. And he would come behind me and jab me in the sides and my arms went up, I've still got the scarring from burning myself. Or he would make it so I caused an injury to myself that I wouldn't have done had he not have done that to me. 
mm-hmm. like burning myself or um, there was one occasion where I just had some surgery and I had a, um, it was like a cast where it was a half cast um, on the back with a bandage around the front to hold it on to allow the swelling to go down. And he had pushed me. I'd lost my balance and trying to stop myself falling, put that leg down on the floor and it snapped everything that I just had the surgery on. So I had to go back and have the surgery. Um, They questioned how it had happened, but I just lied thinking, you know, thinking I don't want to get him into trouble. It'll be fine. We'll be fine. But as I've discussed briefly that I think sometimes you often go for people that are similar to certain family members, shall we say. Yeah. And having grown up from a very young age, having had aggression and having having violence in my household at a very young age, it made me think that that was a normal thing. And I think pretty much all of my ex-partners were very similar to that of, say, my father, for example. And I thought that that was a normal thing. I thought that that was... I didn't see any wrong in it because he had managed to do things that were never questioned, that were never pulled. So I, I didn't question it. And it's not until I was a lot older. And when I say a lot older, I don't actually mean that much older. I think it was more when I had my own child. And I thought to myself, there's no way I could do to him what they did to me. That I started seeing that this actually wasn't right and that it was something that I needed to look at getting out of because otherwise it was just going to continue. And I didn't want to carry on that cycle. I wanted to break the cycle because you see it so many times where yeah, someone's being violent to someone, they have their own child and they continue that cycle. Yeah. And it can go on and on and on. And I wanted to break that cycle so it didn't happen and continue. And it's not easy. It's very hard, especially when they are absolutely trying your patience and you've not been geared up for how to deal with it. And I had to, like, I mean, I was quite lucky because I went into teaching. So I had been given the skills I needed through teaching as to how to deal with behaviour without violence. So I used that. But I joke about how it is much easier to teach somebody else's 30 than it is to look after my one. And I stand by that. It is much easier, or it was much easier for me to teach somebody else's 30 than it was for my one because you can actually give them back at the end of the day as well. You've only got them for six hours. Right. But um, e- e- either way, like it's it's a lot more difficult than the, your own anyway. But um, there's a lot of people that don't have that, that they don't have that um, where they can, the resources to be able to deal with the behavior and it can continue can the domestic violence cycle and then had it have continued on and it went on to mine and he could go on to do his and his relation and i didn't want that i absolutely couldn't so hattie and hattie and ray are are dropping um all the resources that we have been able to come up with for domestic violence um and important things to look at here is um, whether you're in the situation or you're experiencing um, maybe a friend or a sister or brother 
uh, that is in the situation. Uh, speak up. Talk, talk it out with them. Uh, ask questions. Um, are you okay? Do you feel safe? Uh, these are pertinent questions uh, for uh, this this type of thing because be, we don't want to uh, assume that something is going on. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it might not be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it might just be some playtime. Um, and thank you guys for the bits and the shares and the subs and uh, the likes and the, um, all of the uh, Twitch emotes and all that. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. We we love you guys. Um, that's why we keep coming back every week, um, and we'll keep we'll continue to keep growing this show, um, making it better for you. Um, anyway, domestic violence. Uh, mm -hmm. I just, I don't have a whole lot of um, dealings with it, Gemma. Uh, I, That's a good thing, though, to be fair. I certainly had my fair share of, uh, when I was in my drinking state, mm -hmm. I had my fair share of uh, verbally abusive and uh, emotionally abusive um, things. Um, but, I mean, that can literally everybody in the room can raise their hand uh we've all been there when when the uh the booze starts flowing and um there's the melody when the booze starts flowing uh you know things are going to start uh happening in the way of uh maybe like a truth serum, <laughs> you know, uh, you get, you get a lot of abusive comments, um, verbal, emotional, uh, mentally abusive, um, situations. And these are, uh, these are, hurtful to us because we go back and what do we do we at the end of the night when we're done uh partying or um we're done on a simple date night with your wife or or husband uh you go back and you monday morning quarterback it. what did we do right what did we do wrong what you know, all the time, whatever we're doing, we're thinking about, did we do it correctly? It does. It, it could be something like picking up dog shit. Um, everything we do, uh, we think about, could we have done that better? Right. Um, so, I mean, not to throw it uh, away from domestic violence, but I mean, literally everything we do, we interpret, um, did we do it right? Did we do it wrong? Could we have done it a different way? Could we have done it better? Um, and we get in our own head and our own space. And uh, we are our own worst enemy uh, when it comes to the, uh, you know, in, in your head stuff. I get inside my own head more often than that's probably my, I, I don't know if I want to call it my worst, uh, my worst uh, thing about myself, but um, I do get in my own head and that is terrible for your own mental health. Um, it's just as 
as Michael says, I use drinking to help self medicating. Yeah, I mean, that was the uh, that that's kind of um, going to my point. Uh, you come back, you review the the night. What did we do? What did we do wrong? What did we do different? What could have been done better? You start drinking, um, uh, and you start thinking about things. Um, oh, man, I wish I would have done it this way. I wish I would have done it that way. Um, and you get in your headspace. You get in between your ears, as they say. Um, and it just, it eats you alive. It eats you alive. Um, that's what we need to kind of work on. But that, um, as far as uh, domestic violence goes. Um, I'm going to throw it back to Gemma because um, like mm -hmm. I said, I had um, I was I mean in my first marriage I was aggressive um but I was drinking. Um, that was back when I was in my drunk. Um, and I couldn't uh, pull it together. Mm. So uh, it, it's hard to talk about. You know, it sucks. Um, it's depressing. Uh, mm -hmm. But we, we talk about it on here all the time. Uh, and we talk about it together uh, in the Discord, the socials, um, all of our experiences. Uh, mm -hmm. This is what brings us together. Um, I was pretty aggressive when I was drinking. Uh, I was, um, I thought I was a happy drunk. Um, yeah. But uh, apparently, uh, if I had too much, uh, I would get that jealousy, that um, that feeling of mine. What is mine is mine, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what what do you call that? Uh, owning, owning it. Um, possessive. Possessive. Thank you. Thank you. Possessive. Uh, that that is mine. Mm -hmm. My woman. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. I would get very aggressive, and it, it wasn't a good. Um, it wasn't a good thing. But um, <laughs> that was just. I was the aggressor. Um, when I was drinking, so I own up to that, and um, that has now, um, uh, now that I've quit drinking, I don't feel those feelings of jealousy and um, possession, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I feel much <laughs> things feel lighter, you know, like you don't feel as bad, like it doesn't feel like things are against you all the time which is great um this this is what this show is about uh, i want to uh, uh, propel it out there that um there is hope in in sobriety um that it it feels good um you don't have to uh, feel that sense of negativity you know what i'm saying yeah it's true as well like um thinking back to some of my previous um experiences um a lot of i think a lot of the um the ones that I refer to especially it was it was a way of control and 
being overly possessive to the point where they are like I guess in the honeymoon period when you first started and things and everything feels great everything's like brilliant and then you have you start getting a few red flags but you I know certainly me I wanted to um I didn't want to see it because early on a lot of my relationships were more of a desire to get out of the environment I was in at home and try and get into something else hoping that it would be a better life and maybe had I not had the upbringing I did I wouldn't have rushed into things as much as I did I guess but um with the years and years of abuse and being controlled being literally told who i could be what i was allowed to do what i could wear when i could go out when i could eat what i could eat what i everything every aspect of my entire life for many many years was controlled and there were a couple of relationships that were that intense with the violence and the aggression and the controlling coercive behavior that the only way i saw out was to end it as in me which is why the desire to self-harm and end my life came into it because i only saw that as being a way out um and certainly one of my relationships he was very very controlling and he he actually said to me when i tried to split up with him he says if i can't have you nobody can and this was a longer distance relationship he lived around about it would have been around about four hour drive and at that time he could drive i could not and he would come and pick me up and things and take me out but there was always a, there was always a method there was always a payback for that and i was always made to be oh so grateful for all this and i found out that he wasn't exactly who he said he was in the way of like he had he had a secret life basically and when i found this out and i discovered some other things he was very very controlling and things he pretty much told me what i couldn't couldn't wear and tried to isolate me from my family tried to isolate me from my friends i wasn't allowed this this applies to more than one relationship but he they would not allow me to have a lock screen on my phone and i had to hand my phone over at any time of day if i was getting messages from people who's that what's that say show me and i i feel like i think that's why for so many years i was reluctant to engage with anybody else in any sense of the matter because i felt that i was so done in so damaged by all of this that i didn't think that i knew how to act or how to be around anybody else anymore and that's what they want because with one of the relationships they are still very much on the scene in the sense of not that i want them to be but because they still after all this time cannot let go and are still letting me know that they are around and that they are very much a part of my life because they're not going to go away and unless i was to disappear without them knowing where i was 
which is very, very unlikely that I'll be able to do that, then they're always going to be around. I don't know how to shake them off. And that's what they want. They have pretty much damaged the way I think, both about myself, about life, and about everything. Because I... I was with them for so long that it was normal for me. And even though now I know it's not normal, and even then I knew I I didn't like it, I hated it, but it it felt normal because that's all I'd ever known. Even other relationships, it's all I'd ever known was the violence, was the controlling coercive behaviour, was everything that I'd ever known. And I didn't see me ever getting out of that cycle so for the longest time I said no more I can't do it I can't do it to myself especially when I had a child because I didn't want to put him through that and that was that was the fear for me of inflicting all that on him as well and that's what they want from you like, especially when we've discussed about narcissists and gaslighting yeah. and things like that, it all exactly. plays in with each other. Those are all... They will be like that. And if they don't get their own way, that's when the, the, the abuse comes into play as well. Those are all big players in that. The, the, the mm -hmm. narcissists and the gaslighters and the... Oh, yeah. Yeah. And as I said before and as it said on the slide... It doesn't have to be physical right. at all. They never have to lay a finger on you to be abusive. And the best way to deal with it is to get out of it. And I know, I know it's not easy. By God, did I try so hard to get out of it. And there was more than one relationship that I'd actually got out of it and went back into it. And as it says on this slide here at the bottom, it takes an average of seven attempts to finally leave an abuser and an average of 32 incidents to seek help. And it's when you really think about that, it's, yeah, it's devastating because by really the time you get to that, that's a lot of damage, not just yeah. physically, but it's the damage it does to you ment mentally and emotionally. It's that because the wounds, the broken bones, they can heal, but it's what's inside. It's the damage that's inside that it, it not necessarily heals to how it was before like because it's always going to have happened you're always always you couldn't you can't take it away but it can get where it becomes more manageable it it's never just going to disappear and you can't just right. get rid of it out of your mind so i mean and let's let's break it down to the very nitty gritty mm -hmm. uh what is domestic abuse what does domestic mean? In house, right? It's our own, yeah. our mm -hmm. own, our own family. You mm -hmm. know, our own people, our loved ones, our own domestic is in house. Um, yeah. So we leave you tonight with. Um, uh, well, first of all, thank you to Gemma again for. Um, oh. mm -hmm. hey. Thank you again to Gemma for uh, sharing some of her experiences here. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't really have many experiences. Like I, I was aggressive, yes, uh, when I was drinking, um, but uh, like. It, it, I don't have any good stories or, or anything like that. So thank you again to Gemma 
for sharing some of her uh, experiences in this field. Um, and uh, if you are experiencing anything like this, please make it known. Um, please reach out for help. Uh, if you see this happening in your family, you know, speak up. Don't be afraid to speak up. Um, this is hu huge. Huge. Uh, for um, it's got its own month, right? Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Let's look at it that way. Uh, it's big enough that we need to talk about it. Um, please, uh, if you're if you're seeing something happening in your family, don't be afraid to speak up. Right, Gemma? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's definitely not easy. And I know that when people told me about some, it... Some people uh, don't want to be... Uh, some people don't want to be bothered. You know, mm. they, they think that their uh, life is going just great. And, uh, you know, it's it's not... You need help, and yeah. these are those these are those times where you need to reach out and 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 get help. Mm -hmm. Getting the, the person to see that it's not normal, it's not a good environment to be living in, and usually, what starts as lower level like controlling coercive behavior mm -hmm. can generally escalate. If you're seeing red flags that are like that, don't think that that's not going to escalate because it could. And with me, um, just to give you one more example of how it escalated so very quickly, um, my mom at the time, I was 16, my mom didn't like my then boyfriend and I was thrown out of the house. So I had to go stay with him. And I was sat at the side of him watching, it was either football or it was some sport. I think it was football. And I either coughed or sneezed. It was just one of the two. And that made him get I had very long hair it was down to my waist and it was tied up maybe about maybe about here in a bubble and he got me by the hair dragged me off the sofa across the room chopped my hair off completely off of the bubble got me by the scruff of my clothing after beating the crap out of me for um, a while in the room threw me down the stairs and it was a flat. I'm, I'm hearing it. It's not me. Um, it threw me down the stairs. It was a flat that had two up and two down. Luckily, the other tenant had left the door unlocked at the bottom, so I was able to get out. And I run out of the uh, run out of the flat. This was at sixteen. I'd only just turned sixteen. Run out of the flat, and that's when. Um, I was hit over the head and I was raped in the park. Mm -hmm. um, I just turned 16. Um, and not only was that not enough, but he used a bottle then to absolutely destroy my insides. Um, not to end on a grim note, but it's all been checked. It's all fine now. But... It took me a long time to want to tell anybody to get it checked, to want to get it reported. But that's how quickly it can escalate because it was very, very low level stuff. I didn't see the warning signs. I thought it would be fine. It was all just controlling. It was just like remarks or you're not wearing that. You can't wear that. Um, let me see your phone. Just He'd never laid a finger on me to that point. Not a finger. And then it yeah. just snapped and that was yeah. it. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if you're seeing red flags, yeah. be careful. All right, guys. Um, just keep. That's Penelope. Yeah, uh, making an introduction on the show again. Yeah, again. Penelope. <laughs> um, <laughs> just keep your eyes peeled. Uh, always look, listen, feel all the uh, important um, markers are usually usually there. Um, if you need help reach out. We have hotlines available on our website um, and the Discord. Gemma, thank you. Uh, Hattie, Ray, thank you for moderating during the show. Uh, this was a it's not the, the best of topics to talk about, but when you talk mental health, sometimes you gotta get down, down and dirty. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna do a, a episode coming up I'm not looking forward to on suicidal ideation. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know how we're going to go about that one because that's just not something that I like to discuss. Um, but it it is a part of mental health and it should be discussed. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about it on here. Um, but thank you guys for joining us tonight. Um, it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And this is Baby Penelope. Let's do our community calendar. Uh, I'm just going to rattle it off if Gemma wants to throw some things up there. Um, we got Jim in Chicagoland with Catalyst tonight. Um, Jim in Chicagoland, Catalyst. 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Wednesday. Join him for a candle light uh, conversation. We'll Oops. mellow you out midweek. The midweek mellow, right? Um, of course, we got our friends uh, Beardo and Weirdo. Um, they're on break this week, but uh, keep keep eyes out for them. Um, a ray of sunshine. We love Ray. Uh, he is streaming season three started yet. Yes. No, maybe I can't remember. Um, I saw, well, no Ray rated us, didn't he? Ray rated us. So, uh, season three has started. Um, Oh, premieres Tuesday. October 24th, 8 p.m. There you go. And uh, Retro Maker TV, uh, give him a follow. We love Chris. Yeah, yeah. Chris. Uh, <laughs> he's a great guy. Everybody in here is great. I love all of you guys. Um, and thanks for chilling with us. Thanks for talking with us. Um, and don't forget about our good friend, Ella. The bunny mom. Yep. Get your bunny purchases. www.mybunnyvalentine.com uh, Use the promo code FIREDUDE15 for 15% 15 off all your purchases. Uh, she's got great stuff on the website. All kinds of apparel, uh, electronics, uh, everything bunny to help rescue the bunnies for this little girl and for Gemma I'm going to say goodnight 